Hello, everybody. Dave Neal here. Happy Saturday to all of you guys. We've got some women tell all spoilers from reality, Steve, which we're going to get into. As we know, a few days ago, Zachary Reality, Reality Steve's uh, love child. <laughs> uh, I don't know why that cracked me up. Made a TikTok video with some tea about what went down at the uh, Women Tell All. I also received some spoiler information. We already shared that. But Reality Steve has the uh, PhD level of information, and he shares some of it. So I'm going to share that with you guys. If you want to hear what I have to say before the spoilers, stick around. If you are like don't want to watch the spoilers, I'll let you know when those spoilers are about to come out. Now, for my non-Bachelor channel, I've got a new video. Tom Brady, A-list actor. Tom Brady's producing and starring in a new movie called 80 for Brady, which, star which stars four women. It's a true story about four women that attended the uh, Falcons Patriots Super Bowl, I believe, four or five years ago. So that's going to be fun. If you want to watch my breakdown of that, we share some of the clips of Tom Brady acting in other projects. You can see that he's actually a pretty good actor, not just the best football player of all time. Maybe he'll have an Oscar under his uh, belt too. All right, so we're going to get into What's this. Up, um, I... We're going to get into this reality Steve bit in a second. But right before I filmed this, I, re I, I read a comment. And you know me. It's Saturday Dave, Cartoon Energy Dave here. You know me. I can't not respond to a comment. Angie said, I miss Bookshelf Dave. 6.3 minutes out of an 11 minute video, we get to the woman tell all spoilers. I feel duped and we have to sit through political talk. Oh, Angie, I'm so sorry. You had to sit through political talk. The world's on the cusp of a third world war. The greatest um, European military strike that has happened since the 1930s. Oh, Angie. Did we throw you for a loop out there that the real world still exists even if you don't want it to? She says, no one who is supposedly socially aware was talking about the situation in Ukraine over the past month. But now all of a sudden everyone cares. It's fake social awareness. It's talking about it so you can say you spoke about it. Let me ask you this. If your house is burning down and you pick up a hose to water the house down, are you fake aware that your house is on fire or are you talking about it in real time how ignorant angie my response you couldn't be more wrong bookshelf dave existed for about three weeks while i built my office space it has nothing to do with what i stand for how insulting and of course if you don't understand bookshelf dave here's just a clip of bookshelf dave this is essentially before i was able to afford uh to upgrade my situation, the only spot in my studio apartment that I had to record videos was on a bookshelf. So let me tell you a little something, Angie, about Bookshelf Dave. Bookshelf Dave clawed at his fingertips to upgrade his situation. Bookshelf Dave isn't a victim or isn't uh, apologizing for being at the bookshelf. But how dare you think Bookshelf Dave isn't who you get now? Power recapper, Dave. Good grief, Angie. Listen, if you're so blissfully ignorant that you don't have to worry about what's going on in other parts of the world, congratulations to you, Angie. I'm really happy for you. The president of Ukraine is a gosh darn hero right now. And three years ago, he was just some jabroni on a TV show. All right? He doesn't have bone spurs. He's not leaving his country. He said, you're not going to get our backs. You're going to get our face. He's fighting for what he believes in. So, so sorry that our Bachelor channel also discusses world events. That's why people watch. So, yeah, we might wait six minutes till we get to the spoiler, Angie. Can you spare another two minutes? There's a whole country of women and children fleeing because there's a dictator invading their country. And men, grandfathers, boys are sticking, are putting, are holding guns for the first time and learning how to shoot at the opponent that's trying to change their way of life. Good grief, Angie. Good grief. It's a Saturday. Can we not do that? Why don't you go outside and garden and listen to a podcast on, uh, you know, uh, on things that aren't going to get you triggered so much? Did you trigger me? I don't think so. I've been talking about this all week. Yeah, obviously there's been issues with Ukraine and Russia. No one in a million years thought that Russia was going to be invading them the way that they're doing this right now. Our hearts are melting with what we see. We're seeing grandparents getting run over by military vehicles. We're seeing just just incredible uh, moments of bravery by Ukrainian soldiers and civilians alike. It's inspiring to those of us that have our eyes open and are watching it. Maybe you could do the same, Angie. All right. 
You like Angry Dave? You got it. Let's get into it. Women Tell All Spoilers by Reality Steve. Hey, we're going to get into this. It's only five minutes into the video, Angie. Can you believe that? I just gave you an extra minute. I hope you enjoy. These were the 18 women in attendance. <laughs> Listen, Angie, don't take it personally. I don't know who you are. I don't know anything about you other than you got a cute little dog there, okay? So understand, you're the egg and we are making an omelet and you just got cracked. Okay, let's get into it. Here are the spoilers. Turn away if you don't want them. This is what happened at the Women Tell All, according to Reality Steve. These were the 18 women in attendance. Serene, Teddy, Sarah, Mara, Shanae, Genevieve, Sierra, Jill, Lindsay, Elizabeth, Cassidy, Hunter, Kate, Marlena, Kira, Claire, Eliza, and Sally. I can't believe Sally made it. This is exciting. Yes, Sally Carson, the woman who'd just gotten divorced in Clayton offered the rose to before night one, but she turned it down. Hey, someone had told me, hey, Dave, I'm glad you're starting to pronounce the T in Clayton. That's exciting. First of all, Clayton, you know, I'll pronounce it different ways depending on my mood. Clayton says that he doesn't pronounce the T either. He calls himself Clayton. So if he calls himself Clayton, it's Clayton. Clayton all day. Five women were brought up into the hot seat. Teddy, Serene, Sarah, Shanae, and Sally. Sally came out last and was only brought up for her hot seat. She didn't stay on stage with the women. She said that she didn't have any regrets about going. She had a lot of emotions in the hotel and also said she never applied while she was engaged. Someone nominated her. No mention of whether or not she immediately got back with her ex-husband when she returned home, which he seemed to insinuate on social media back in September. That wasn't brought up. Yeah, I've covered... Uh, there's no contestant I've talked about more for the lack of stage time they, they've actually had on the show than, than Sally. Um, Teddy and Serene's hot seat time went as you would expect. There was nothing major that happened with them. Recapped their time, talked about their relationship with Clayton, and no real fireworks. All right. Sinead was a different story. Oh, boy. Sinead basically said she didn't even want to be there, but had to be, which I'm assuming insinuates that producers made her go. Sinead never apologized for anything she did. During her hot seat, they... Uh, brought uh, Genevieve on stage to sit next to her and she asked her why she called her an actress. Sinead then threw out the accusation that Genevieve boinked Matt the bartender and Aaron Clancy. Matt was, I guess, a bartender in Toronto and Aaron did appear once in an IG story of Genevieve's, but there was nothing to back. She'd slept with either one of them. First of all, who cares who she slept with in the past? Just Gene just Sinead accusing her of it. All right, that's so... So Sinead found new, way new ways to get people to not like her. They also showed a video to everyone of all the stuff Shanae said about the woman and it was unedited. Of course, when it airs on TV, it will be bleeped out for us, but it wasn't for them. And Shanae called Elizabeth, see you next Tuesday. You can put that acronym together. Uh, and a bunch more bitches and hoes comments. All in all, the Shanae hot seat time will be what most people will be talking about. A lot of arguing. Some woman told her to flip off and nothing got resolved. She didn't apologize. None of the women like her. And that's that. On Sarah's hot seat, Teddy called her out about lying about telling the girls how her and Clayton cried together. People were accusing Sarah of having training before the show because she knew so many ex-Bachelor contestants. Some women defended Sarah's tears that Clayton said were fake and that he shouldn't have said that to her. Sarah's already taken to her IG after it was all over in case you missed it. Cassidy wasn't on the hot seat, but the women did go after her for coming onto the show, seemingly treating it like a game and had a whole plan and strategy and just wanted to play a role. Cassidy's defense was she said she didn't. <laughs> there you go. When Clayton was on, when Clayton got on stage, he definitely took some, uh, took some from the women for keeping Shanae around for not listening to the warnings. He said he regretted believing Shanae and apologized to everyone. Also apologized to Genevieve for speaking to her how he did on two on one date, accusing her of being an actress because she brought that up to him. By all accounts, Clayton had a rough time at this woman tell all. Did a lot of apologizing. and was doing his best to try and mend fences with well everybody. The Jesse Palmer comment I referenced earlier was he said during the taping more than once. I don't know how the journey ends. Well, if Jesse is the host of the show and he is was there in Iceland and would seemingly be there the day of a final row ceremony, and he's saying even he doesn't know how the journey ends. Well, certainly lends more credibility to Fleiss's tweet from Monday and what I'd reported I'd heard last week, which was there was no finality in Iceland. I guess we'll see. I love that they just use the term finality in Iceland. It sounds like, doesn't it sound like a... Uh, you know, it's like a movie you'd see Owen Wilson in, you know, oh, just some finality in Iceland. Wow. You know, all right. That's a bad impression. Read a couple of comments from you guys regarding this information. I really want to know why the producers are so obsessed with the Sally storyline. My new conspiracy theory is that she's somehow blackmailing producers for screen time because what the F nobody cares. I'm actually surprised more people don't care about the Sally storyline because it's fascinating. She still had a wedding registry. She had all these things going on. If her relationship ends up not working out with the guy that she went back to 
clearly she's going to be invited back onto the show. Um, I don't know. I mean, all the damage is done. I'm glad, I'm glad she's uh, sort of uh, still invited back. Um, someone said, wasn't expecting Aaron Clancy's name to get thrown around at the Women Tell All. Yeah, that's a new one. Uh, why is Sally there if she's back with her ex-fiance? Are they hoping she'll dump him again in time for paradise? Maybe. Hey, Sally seems like a nice person. I actually like Sally. Why are they trying to make Sally happen? So a lot of people are upset about the Sally part, which is so funny. There's so much, so many bigger fish to fry. Uh, can we change the name from Women Tell All to Women Tell Very Little? Um, I think they tell enough. I stopped watching a few weeks ago because I wasn't invested at all in this Shanae drama. It was too much. It seemed like this entire season was centered around her drama. The Sally thing. So a lot of uh, Shanae saying that Genevieve effed Aaron Clancy based on a single IG story she posted with him, LOL. She's really scum of the earth material. And again, like everyone else was saying, why would it matter if she did? Why would any of that matter? Why does anything in Bachelor Nation matter? You know, it only matters because we project our personal lives onto these relationships. Who would I uh, hook up in the fantasy suite with? Who do I think is being manipulative? We we watch it as if it's like we're part of the story. I get it. We're living vicariously through it. I'm not asking you guys to live vicariously through the struggles of Ukraine. I think most of you guys have kept your eyes open. Dave, how could you so effectively go from women to law to the issues in Ukraine? Well, it's because you talk about what you talk about. And I swear, for the people that might be new to my channel, if you want something that's vacuum sealed just in the Bachelor universe, go to Bachelor Fan Take. Go to some of these other channels. There's nothing wrong with what they do. It's fantastic. My channel's not that, okay? It's not that. The Bachelor is just the springboard, and what we decide to dive into is what we decide to dive into. Um, you know... Go to Instagram if you want instant spoilers, right? My channel videos are always 10 to 15 minutes long. And what's so funny about the person who's like, I miss Bookshelf Dave. That's a 24-minute long video, okay? With zero production value and bad audio. What the hell's wrong with you? It's almost like you just miss something. I don't know. I, you know what? I've said enough about the topic. I think we're. I think most of us are on the same page where we... Like whatever it is you pray to or for or send positive energy for every single person in Ukraine that's fighting for their life right now, our hearts go out to you. None of what we talk about over here matters compared to the bravery and heroism that you guys are living moment by moment as you fight for your life on this third day of invasion. Uh, for all of the people in my audience that have friends and family over there, some young children. I've heard from you guys. We, we, if there's anything I can do, if there's any organization I can promote that's going to actively help your family, let me know. We are really ready to rally uh, in, in, you know, around in whatever ways we can to help people. If you're in Poland, I know we have people that watch over there. Let us know. Let us know what we can do to help all of the displaced families and all of the people right now fighting uh, for their lives. We, We've, we've never seen bravery so so um, evident in our lifetimes uh, uh, as what we're watching go down right now. And it's um, it's a disgrace that that's what has to happen. But we are here uh, at the ed edge of our seat, just um, hoping that it um, hoping that it works out for all of you guys. All right, folks, that's our that's our day for uh, for Saturday. If there's any other content, I'll let you guys know. Uh, be kind in the comment section. All right. Bye, guys.